Hey everybody, welcome to the vlog. We are packed up for the Jamboree. We're leaving way later than I intended. It's 5.36 p.m. on Wednesday, July 6th. Oh, I took a swing by dad to give him some cashew dip and get a thing I want signed. Oh, I took less stuff this time. Oh man, my I slept like crap and my back is literally killing me. I never take ibuprofen or anything, but I took it today. So a good day for that. Uh, plenty of stuff in the cooler. A couple of guitars back there. Uh, Mary's just doing last checks. We already said goodbye to the cats. That's the saddest part. I gotta give them treats though. That was fun. It's been humid as hell. It finally cooled off. It's nice now, of course. But uh, it's been humid as hell. But then we had this major storm come through and that slowed us down. And uh, our power was flickering on and off, but on and off. So I was like, well, I guess I ain't gonna get that Clerks 3 trailer done at home. So I'm gonna have to do that in the hotel at some point. <sighs> but I'm anxious as hell to get on the road because it's gonna be like six and a half, seven hour drive plus a little stop. So we ain't getting to that hotel like after 1 a.m probably about 1 a.m. I'll hang out for a few hours, go to sleep, and then we got Thursday to dick around until 10 p.m. for Thor. But other than feeling kind of like shit, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Mary must be coming out. Her phone just connected. That reminded me, I need to Bluetooth connect my other phone. I also need to get the address and use this for ways. So I'll try to update you when we get there. Hey, <clears throat> it's Thursday. We'll tell you more later. Hotel's nice, everything's fine, but we're out at lunch, we're starving, we just got some appetizers. And Mary wants you to see the, uh, what are they? Bonito flakes. Bonito flakes, dancing. This karage smells phenomenal, by the way. So we're at Kame Ramen Bar. There's a lot of incredible restaurants around here. It's like 4.30, something like that, 4.45 now. Mm -hmm. We've already been hanging out with John Brennan and the Big Feet, Jimmy and the gang Liz. Bump will be no Justin and Amy here, my two favorite people. But hanging out with Gerald, a lot of cool people. The party has begun. We're starving. Enjoy. <sighs> it's hot. I gotta go move more heavy shit. People are coming. <sighs> I always have like no AC. <laughs> Elevators are worse. Everybody's sweat nasty though, so it's fine. I haven't showered yet, obviously. I'm gonna go have a nice coffee and hang out with all the cool kids for a little bit before I go try and shower. That's my plan. Got a lot of cool mutant folks are hanging out in the lobby. John Brennan's around, Jimmy, big feet. <laughs> so bummed, no Justin and Amy though this year. That's such a bummer. Anyways, we got here late last night. Fine, the room's fine. I'll show you all that stuff. If anybody's on the elevator, I'm going to cut off the vlog. Otherwise I will vlog until somebody gets on. <sighs> Thank God for this. All, right. All clean, already getting sweaty. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna have a drink first. Welcome to Friday. I need coffee. Last night was a crazy blast. I mean, like Joan Ray and a whole bunch of mutant people all night. We drank, it was fucking amazing. Mary's still sleeping, but I need coffee. It's almost 2 p.m. I just woke up, convention starts in a couple hours. There's gonna be another one for the history books. I'll try to do some better filming today. At least the drive in. Okay. This camera is heavy, I need coffee. <laughs> Tour was great, we'll talk about it later. Okay, so Chase changed my strings. I gotta tune it. Um I had a bit of a string accident with the high E, as sometimes happens when you're stringing, you overtune and snaps, and it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, my wrist, not my face. I do need to tune this. I still gotta do the acoustic guitar as well. Uh, fun story about how ridiculously dumb and privileged I am with things. I don't think I've changed guitar strings on any guitar in at least a decade, because I kind of just, when the strings got old, bought a new guitar. <laughs> Found some really good ones at the guitar shop too, and it's funny. Our hotel stay could have bought one, and the convention tickets could have bought another. But this is convention has already been worth it. Last night was insane. All right, I gotta finish my coffee. <laughs> Can 
throughout, and throughout the time that we're having music on the stage, uh, Darcy and I will be over in the, they have a thing set up for us over by the concession stand, I think we'll be, we'll be signing. If you want to get stuff signed uh, during that time, we'll also uh, be signing uh, after the movie. Uh, we'll have a Q&A after the movie. If we can convince uh, Tom and Stacy and Tommy Lee to stay here, they'll also be signing uh, after the movie. So, um... Wait, not yet, Yuki. We'll, we'll bring you on stage a little bit. He hasn't had the. He hasn't been on screen for so long. He wants to come up. He don't want to. We, we, we got it. Gerald, 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 Gerald. Gerald's in the house. Everybody better meet Gerald. He's one of the first people I met last year at the. Uh, He's sitting in his car right now. I'm sitting in his car, drinking. <laughs> so let's do another one from the show, but uh, from a movie about a killer from Staten Island. It's called Man Man Moss. <laughs>
Knocked down then. There wasn't, I didn't hit bottom, but I got knocked down, then I got up again. But did you take a, a, a drink? Yes! I took a vodka drink. What about the lager drink? I got a lager drink, I got a whiskey drink. A cider drink? Shabu Wamba. <laughs>
Vaporizing, flashing pumpkins. Motor vehicle body crushing. Eye socket thumb gouging. Suicidal motor vehicle explosion. Power drill through the air. Child face disintegration with cockroaches and snakes. Exploding factory. Three foot chases. Heart barking. Neolithic ritual rock theft. Why no head ripping, multiple mouth bugs, mechanical Betsy Ross head removal, gratuitous thunderstorm, gratuitous mechanical toy museum, heads roll, arm rolls, Thorazine foo, latex foo, stone hitch foo, blue lightning, laser foo, rattlesnake foo, tire iron foo, mask foo. Driving Academy Award nominations for Al Berry as the blubbering escapee who kicks the story off by screaming, they're coming, they're coming, even though no one's coming. Uh, Dick Duroc as gray-suited android numero uno. Well, Nancy Loomis as the nagging ex-wife for saying drinking and doctoring, great combination. Uh, Win Wendy Westberg as Loomis? Teddy, the assistant coroner with a crush. Stacey Nelkin as the grieving daughter who trolls the bar is looking for the doctor who treated her dead father, then vacations with him in a creepy small town for saying, relax, I'm older than I look. Uh, Dan O'Hurley as the owner of the biggest mask company in the world, who makes speeches about our houses of wattle and clay and the alignment of the planets while planning to kill millions of children. Ralph Strait as Buddy, the plaid jacketed toy store tourist. Brad Schachter as the 12 year old victim. Uh, Garn Stevens as Marge, the bossy woman who gets laser lasered with a Stonehenge microchip while reading Carlos Castaneda. And of course, Tom Atkins. Woo! Of course, Tom yeah! With a drinking problem, who wants to save the world and get laid, not necessarily in that order. Um, I'm not going to give it a star rating until the night, night's over. You know, let the debate begin. <laughs> Joe Bob says, check it out. Check it out. Woo! Depends on when you think she turned into a robot. Well, that's what I was going to ask you that too. Was she a robot the whole time? Because I don't remember a scene where she transformed into a robot. And so, 
for me, the uh, in writing this book, I pondered that because you know you could take it either way. The film does not explain which way it goes. For me, though, to have her be a robot the whole time, although there are a lot of credibility issues throughout the movie, that one goes too far for me. I feel yeah. like she was transformed while she was held captive. at a sushi place and they have sushi nachos on Doritos. Look at that. How awesome does that look? It looks messy as fuck. Yeah, it's gonna be messy as fuck. It's gonna be delicious. So this is Red Koi. Red Koi something, probably Red Koi sushi or something. But if you're in Memphis, oh, it smells fantastic. Oh yeah. I think I'm still drunk from last night. <laughs> oh, that was good lunch. I still haven't pooped. <laughs> He's still drunk apparently. I'm still a little drunk from last night. But you know what we're doing now? B double E double Are you in beer run? I thought you'd sing it with me. B W are you in beer run? I don't wow, you know a lot more than I do. Alright, now where the fuck's our car? I used to know this. Like oh we're over okay, there we are. Oh yeah, because what, how many beer, how, let's see, I brought, I brought like three six packs and a four pack. Um, I think there's a few of those left. We went through a lot last night. I was giving out beers, you know what I'm saying? He was handing them out like. I made some real cool friends doing it. <laughs> so yeah, all right, beer run, ice for the cooler. We gotta get ready to party. Tonight's Ramones, baby. I have a, I'm, the habit is not closing her door in the heat. All right, more. We are restocking beers. Uh, what is that, it's an IPA. Some people like IPA, so those are to give away. This is a blonde ale, I've never had it, pretty good. We got a new Heffenweiser, that is my jam. Mary is doing a great job packing the cooler. We're gonna go to the Exxon and get some ice. So we are back to being well stocked for booze. For uh, Ramona's night, I got a couple more Iron Maiden beers, still plenty of Kona's. Mostly the Kona Big Waves didn't get drank because uh, bottle opener is a pain in the ass. There's a bottle Versus opener in, 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 uh, built into our chair. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? I know, right? Okay. But anyways, that's what's happening. And uh, there'll be more later because tonight is Ramon's night, man. It's going to be it's gonna be a Blitzkrieg pop. <laughs> right, got it. Oh, we would have gotten in trouble. We're just, we're just we doing this for friends, you know. If, if, if anybody catches us, I'm going to 
They are posters and stickers. I'm starting a little too quickly. <laughs> I'm telling the camera. This is, I'm halfway through number two. I'm going to get the show to start so I can... <laughs> no, this is half... Uh, no, I gave... I've only given Jonah one and Jimmy one so far. And then... I, well, I had seven because I walked one. Yeah, no, okay. Jimmy! Jimmy, get it up there. <laughs> I fucking love those guys, they're so much fun. Use a little blue suede shoes for you. Sound check. There is sound. Check. <laughs> what is the horn going to buy? Here for the show. Ready, get ready now.
a couple of songs for you. Woo! You know I'm Woo! Oh my god. This fucking band. Did you walk into Memphis with Joe? Why did you walk into Memphis? Ah, <laughs> 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 yeah! <laughs> and kaiju that are all over the planet and this is another version that we did in the show in the show I rap because I'm white and that's just what I have to do <laughs> as a comedian and this is uh, going to be called this one's called Reptilicus New Wave and i got to kiss my breath first because there's a lot of words <laughs> right, so we're really quick we're right here we're right now we're a bunch of the immune fam so let's all breathe in <laughs> don't fuck this up not everyone really like to my season I have to win these people over. <laughs> I think you messed up when you said mutant fan. I think it's driving fan. I can't remember. No, it's mutant fan. You got it. You got it. Oh, God damn it. Are you talking out loud? <laughs> and then exhale. <laughs> uh, this is Cobra Tuck. Let's do a... Fuck it. What's it?
So glad you managed to randomly ended up coming down here to see at least that. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. 
This is Mitch is about to go. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, whoa. What? Look at that. Wait, what's happening? Magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the vlog. Is, yeah, yeah. is, is that the get the fuck out lights? Are right, you guys? Jimmy. Like you like each other. Uh, <laughs> 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 Woo. Jimmy. I can't, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, there you go. Both posts. <laughs> Jimmy D. Jimmy D. Jimmy D. Jimmy D. Jimmy D. <laughs> Louie, Louie, we like it loud. No, 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 no. This is important. This is our. This is the mute movie sign. It, it's, it's yelling at Jeffy, actually. Oh no, no. From a Frank Zappa album. Oh, okay. I got you. I was just. I think that's from Uncle Me. I think I've had a movie and they like it loud. Ah, I think I've had like six beers. Yeah, you yeah, movie sign. There you go. What's too crazy about it? So, my buddy Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. It's okay. Me. This is, Jonah this is Ray. perfect because that's happened to me a lot. It's because of what you're about to say, is why I did that. Okay. He has a new nickname. Be my new friend, Adult Bobby Hill.
That was Rip Randall. Rip Randall! Woo! Declaring war on the establishment in what I consider the best. Um, multiple food fights, freshman hazing, urinal head dumping, exploding mouse, exploding high school, giant dancing mouse, goldfish eating, extended Ramones concert, grippy face bashing, convertible rock, sidewalk rock, bedroom rock, bathroom rock, whiskey and go-go rock. Red jacket food, rope burn food, laundry cart food, bra strap unfastening food. Yeah. 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 Nominations for Mary Warnoff as the yeah. 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 Do you know that your parents are Ramones? Yeah. Do your parents know you are Ramones? PJ Souls as the school rebel. Yeah. Alan Arcus, the director for channeling Busby Berkeley in the big yeah. student takeover dance scene. Yeah. Dennis Van Patten as the fumbling football student who can't get laid. Paul Bartell as the music teacher yeah. who learns how to boogie. Yeah. Uh, the real Don Steele as Screaming Steve, the Screaming DJ. Clint Howard as yeah. DJ. Yeah. The boys room businessman who gives dating lessons and uh, can take care of anything for a price. And the Ramones. Yeah. 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 They have to learn how to lip sync before they can make this video. <laughs> Four stars. Come up, say, yeah. 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 Woo. You know, anybody who doesn't like this movie <laughs> should just be forced to watch Pretty and Pink in the Breakfast Club <laughs> <laughs> until their brain explodes. You, know? <laughs> you like John Hughes movies? Really? Okay. <laughs> Fuck John Hughes. <laughs> Fuck John Hughes! Fuck John Hughes! Fuck John Hughes! Fuck John Hughes! No joke, that was insane. A, a video I don't have unless I find it from somebody and borrow it. I got to sing part of the KKK took my baby away. <sighs> I finally peed after like eight beers through that whole concert. You, are you cool with being in my video real quick? Oh, sure. Liz, Hello. ship to shore. Fucking awesome. Ship to shore shack. Ship to show. <laughs> Phono oh, no, co. All right. <laughs> I'll see you, but thank you. Um, I don't even know. I just ate a cheeseburger. I'm uh, going to drink some water. Then I'm going to go party some more. I think I had something to say. I don't know. Whatever, man. <laughs> this is as great as last weekend. All right, more soon. I remembered what I was going to tell you. I bought that beer bandolier as a joke. It has been a lifesaver. It was a great purchase. <laughs> I mean, like, in a practical way. It's fun how much people like it and think it's the coolest thing. But, like, practically, it is... I'm going to get a better one <laughs> next year. Okay, I'm about to hit cars. I don't want to light them up. I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 I love that Alan Arkus had the balls to use complete songs in the movie. Roger, Col Roger Corman told him not to do that. He told him to cut out the middle of the songs like they do in most movies. But remote songs don't have a middle. <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, they rarely wrote a song that was more than two minutes long. Anyway, uh, Arkush stuck to his guns on the uh, 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 extended concert footage that's the turning point of the movie, the point at which all-out war breaks out between concerts was destroying the eardrums of American youth. Hence the scene where Ms. Togar explodes the mouse uh, and, shows the, and shows that the mouse has become gangsterish by listening to rock music for a week. And uh, that scale of noise ranking the dangerousness of various musical acts. The only one from this movie who's still alive is Marky Ramone, the drummer yeah. in this movie. Uh, Les Ramone Marky's from dope. this film, who's still alive today. And um, Alan Arkush, uh, of course, became one of our leading TV directors and producers, responsible for dozens of long-running TV series. All right, Darcy, I ask you to collect mail from the audience. And I did. Enjoy. This is pathetic. This is like I don't think we were clear about where we have two. Naked. We have know. two. 
They're two, really important two people. to you. All right, people, you, this, this is a lazy jamboree audience. Come on. You got to start bringing us the mail. Um, okay, so the first one, well, the first one is for BJ. Have you talked about this movie with Roger Corman after it was released? Elvis's solution to that, and he needed a solution because he got really sweaty during his performances. His solution was to pour an entire bottle of Jade East over the jumpsuit every time it needed to be fumigated. Yeah. So you have this mixture of Elvis sweat and Jade East that apparently gets pretty rancid. But Bruce Campbell took one for the team and put the suit on anyway. And, um, but now it's time for the walk. And uh, that, that, that's what they call it in Westerns. So they say, you know, when they want to highlight the, the most dramatic moment in the Western, they said, let's do a walk. And you know how you see, you see four guys shoulder to shoulder, they come up over a rise in the landscape, they got their guns holstered, they're moving in lockstep together toward the camera. You know, it's a signal to moviegoers everywhere that it's time for the most dramatic showdown of the story. And I know that's what Don Coscarelli was thinking when he did this shot, because he said one of his influences for the movie was the great Sam Peckinpah flick, um, Ride to High Country, the story of... Uh, Joel McRae and uh, Randolph Scott of old age cowboys uh, continuing to do what they do best in the face of desperate times. One of those last gasp movies. So the problem in this case though is that he doesn't have you know Joel McRae and Randolph Scott he, he, and, and he certainly, certainly doesn't have four guys coming over the landscape. There's only two of them. Of the Blumhouse movie Black Phone, Mayra of Omaha. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen it. Asleep in his beautiful palace in my office back in Brooklyn. Ernie Wonder. Thanks for asking. You just didn't want him to take a shit. <laughs> you didn't take a shit. <laughs> Probably shouldn't right now. Eh? Does our resident mango <laughs> dick expert, or MDE, have any helpful... We got a few more. Alright. What did I say? We're good? Oh. <laughs> Alright, so... Hi everybody. Thank you for letting me host cartoons with you this morning. It was wonderful. Thanks for doing it. It was so fun. <laughs> I was just here to do it by myself. The cartoons were a sellout. Yeah, I know, right? Like yeah. everything looks sick. Awesome. So, I have something I've been wanting to tell you for 25 years, the first time I ever met you, 25 years ago. So, I was... I was this in jail? In a bar? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, it was, in, it was in Guadalajara. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy down there. I wanted to tell you this. Um, I was 15 years old. You were doing Monster Vision. And uh, I emailed you. AOL was new. And you were taking email. I emailed you just out, just out of nowhere. You emailed me back the next day. Got back to me. I emailed you. I said, I want to be a filmmaker when I grow up. I want to do these things. I mean, I... <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little, but anyway, I want to be a filmmaker when I when I grow up or whatever. Um, if I ever make a film, or if I ever do anything like that, would you ever be on it? Now, it's the question I ask you. The next day, you reached back out to me and said, you tell me when and I'll be there. Now, I don't hold you to that because I know you're a busy man. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know. I do, that meant everything to me as a kid, and I do what I do now because of you. And that's what I want to tell you. I've been waiting 25 years to tell you. Oh, well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Have a good night. All right. All right. Um, Gringo! Oh, we have one more? Oh, there's a few more. You got a lot more. <laughs> so, actually, with Gringo, Gringo, come on back. Oh, Gringo, go, 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 go. All right. So, in this corner, our reigning champion from Tromaville, New Jersey, Woo! the one and only Gringo Fantastico. Woo! And in this corner, from parts unknown, Joe Bob Briggs. Woo! Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> okay. Um, so, <laughs> I feel like that's too much energy for Joe Bob right now. Yeah. So, little, little performance art. So, yeah. um, 
Uh, so with Bubba Hotep, I mean, isn't that really, we've got uh, Elvis has become an old guy. He's kind of started at the beginning of the movie, he's feeling sorry for himself. He's feeling, uh, um, you know, he's gotten old. He just doesn't really even have much respect for himself anymore. And, and so it really is like a redemption story for him. Is, is that a fair assessment? Oh yeah, it's definitely a redemption story. And um, uh, Bruce Campbell actually wanted to, was hoping that uh, Elvis's family would, would watch it and comment on it because he thought they would love it. I don't think they ever did. Um, uh, they have given their support to this big budget movie that just came out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they were, they were determined um, that it not be camp and that it not be cheap shots and Elvis, that it truly be, that it, that it truly be loving towards Elvis, and I think they achieved that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Woo, Jimmy! Yeah. Yeah. What? What if I forget some of the words? Yeah. <laughs> we won't know. All right. All right. Uh, everybody, raise your right hand Woo. and repeat after me. We are driving mutants. We are driving. We are not like other people. We are not like other people. We are sick. We are sick. We are disgusting. We are disgusting. If life had a vomit meter, if life had a vomit meter, we would be off the scale. We would be off the scale. As long as one drive-in remains, as long as one drive-in remains on the planet Earth, on the planet Earth, we will boogie till we puke. We will boogie till we puke. We will party like jungle animals. We will party like jungle animals. The drive-in will never die. The drive-in drive will never die. die. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Woo! Awesome. Woo! All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Take and care that's of it business. for me, Joe Bob Briggs, reminding you in the words of the great Willie Dixon, the blues are the roots and all the other musics are the fruits. The drive-in will never die. It's 6 a.m. I haven't gone to bed yet, but I had an insanely inspirational talk. Films are coming. I'm going to finish. Hold on. Let me make sure I have my camera. It's late. I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish this vodka and soda and go to bed. I haven't had a chance to process. I'm going to be so late tomorrow, but it's cool. Tomorrow, I'm less worried about everything. Sunday's the chill day. There's cool shit, but... Did I mention my buddy Jacob? We didn't know his mutant fam, who's a writer. Let's just say there was an epic fucking conversation. Oh, we making some shit. We making some incredible shit. Get ready for Eric's filmmaking. Please hold me to it. Bitch at me if I don't do it. I can go back in the lobby. And then I can go upstairs, watch 10 minutes of YouTube and go to bed. Cheers. We're finally having some barbecue. Well, Mary is. I may get something to go. Sweet potato fries are good. Mango cheese is quite freaking tasty. Awesome pickles. Deviled eggs are hitting the spot. I got what is called a junkyard dog. You ready for this? So there's like a hot dog under there somewhere with baked beans, coleslaw, fries on top. I'm very excited to try it. And pulled pork. It, no, and pulled pork on there. So I guess I am having some barbecue. <sighs> Wish me luck. I have no idea how I'm going to eat this. <laughs> but I'll throw I guess. Well, no. I'm not even sure how to get to this. Uh, I think it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. I see the bun over here. <laughs> uh, uh, it's fine. We'll get up. Where is the bun? There's the bun. I, I'm not even sure if I can actually eat this without knife and forking it. <laughs> I might, I'm, I might supposed to knife and fork it. I don't know. I just really like relish. I relish. You relish the uh, <clears throat> idea of holding this in my hands. That ain't happening. I'm gonna have to knife and fork this. <laughs> oh my god. Eric has been defeated. Well, there's just, this is like five pounds of stuff in one hot dog. This 
surprising good though. Where's my cord? Next, next question. Will he be defeated the second time as plastic cutlery? Plastic made cutlery, out? exactly. Just, I mean, that's fine. That's not like nothing to complain. Okay, I need crap. <laughs> I'll use your, your mac and cheese thing to help weigh it down. Well, I, I, I'll figure it out. I don't know. Out of here. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about trying to keep the fries in there. It's probably gonna put something in my mouth when I get a bite here. Kind of something. Something other than cheese. Oh my god. Now the finer of cutting through the, the food without cutting through the, the styrofoam <laughs> that, underneath. That is a different story altogether. I think this will be easier once I, you know, make some space to get at it. Oh yeah, this is just gonna be like I'm just gonna break up into mush and eat it like a stew. <laughs> is it crazy? What is that? Crush from baking. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Hold up. Now, wait a minute. Oh. I think I have some of the hot dog in here. Jesus. Give you a little better look now that I've kind of worked into that. This is amazing. This is incredibly tasty. If everything else is this good, I highly recommend this place. But it's kind of hidden. But look at Mary's bowl for it, man. Yeah. I gotta try some of this habanero stuff too. But uh, yeah, I'm just glad I danced my butt off all weekend so I can handle these calories. California to New York, from the Mahoning to the Malco. And with every trip we've taken, you've made the journey just as great as the destination. Now, full disclosure, you did ask me to be your old lady a couple months ago, but I'm really stubborn and I was not gonna let this plan that I've had in place for about a year go. So with that, as an independent woman in 2022, I wanna ask you, Will you be my drive-in mutant partner for all eternity? Woo! I love you. Woo! I'm coming down for him. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Kelly. All right, tonight, the closing night of the 2022 Jamboree. This is the essence of what this whole festival is about. Yeah, no, no, we're taking over, okay? Oh, no. Here's what's gonna happen before we do this world drive-in jamboree, okay? You are gonna sit in a chair right here, and you were gonna watch us watch our full thing. All 73 beautiful minutes. You know, 10 minutes of credits, but that's Augzilla for you. I've never watched all 73 minutes of <laughs> Well, you did one time. And tonight will mark probably the last time. I hope it's the last time because I'm, I'm sick of hearing about it. Oh, you, you're never going to stop hearing about it, but we're going to do it right here tonight. Matt, get a chair from my man. There it is. Joe Bob Briggs is going to sit right there. And he's going to hear us make fun of, well, him and a few other things. Mainly a robotic talk. It's going to be wonderful. So, let me introduce, without further ado, our rhythm. First of all, you know him. You love them. 
I think you all, you were yelling about him earlier. Jonah Ray. Beautiful. Is it on? Get in my man some, some amps. No, I think it was on me. Oh, okay. That's on me. Use your error. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Give it up for us. Give it up for Jeff. Give it up for the new soon-to-be-married couple. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice yeah. Ain't nothing better than love. Yeah. Except for maybe Hogzilla. So, <laughs> number two is a Mr. John Brennan. Yeah. Because he, more than anyone I know, Love to say the words. Hogzilla, 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 say Hogzilla, Hogzilla, Hogzilla. Oh, Joe Bob, you're so screwed, man. <laughs> Not gonna be good. We're doing this out of love and respect. Love and yeah, respect. Love and respect to the arts. <laughs> and last and certainly not least, the beautiful, the wonderful, Darcy the oh. Ultra, Darcy the Mail Girl. Darcy. Whatever. You guys are. We friends. all sit. In the you guys are afraid of the chair. I'll sit in the chair. Ah, but here's the thing. Oh, he's sitting right there. We can yell. Ah, at him. No, this is not allowed. This wasn't great. part of the agreement. Oh well. I was just supposed to make eye contact with Joe Bob. No, now it's a roast. It went from being really friendly and relaxed. Now it's a it's a roast. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I don't have to meet the people that make the movies in Mr. Science Theater. <laughs> However, we have a secret riff for tonight. I mean, me, but that, that's beside the point. I'm just more the master of ceremonies. You all. So, I have a microphone. It's hanging out over there, right in front of that beautiful big screen. And we're going to play this beautiful film. And one at a time, because there's plenty of meat on this hog. If you guys want to walk up and give yourself a little riff, please do. Because we're going to need all the help we can get to get through Hogzilla. That's true. If it's good, if I like it, we'll break it. If we all enjoy it, uh, I will give you this Night and Dawn and Day of the Dead shirt that I got because I don't want to bring these home. And if you'll get a free shirt, size not a guarantee. <laughs> you know, I got a few uh, VHS tapes over here. Oh. I won't tell you what they are, but they're a secret. You'll get those if they're good. Don't throw them at them. Be careful. Some of, one of them is a snuff film, so just be careful. <laughs> but you change the labels, you'll never know. <laughs> Golden, Golden ticket. All right, so without further ado, gentlemen, I say we begin Hogzilla. Hogzilla! 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 Any minute, don't worry. All right. There it is. Oh, oh here we go. Here, 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 here. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. I give to you the light of a lady, our most beloved star. Let it be your light, your darkest time. Oh. Is this that new Crazy Town video? <laughs> Come my Hugzilla, come come my Hugzilla, you're my Hugzilla. Come my Hugzilla, come my Hugzilla, you're my Hugzilla. Come on, Hugzilla. Hugs famously having crushed tonight. Finally, finally, the burning romance can continue. Yeah. What's happening? This is crazy. What are we doing? Closing night of the 2022 Jamboree 
this is supposed to be the essence of what this whole thing is all about and the reason we're doing this. This is the World Drive-In Movie Festival. Two features and eight shorts, the best flicks of the past year made outside the traditional New York, LA, London financing systems. These are the true indie films of the world. I didn't get it in, but Shin Hogzilla. Shut the fuck up, I swear to God. That was great. Zero. <laughs> Another of the winning shorts cost 250 bucks. I want these future famous motherfuckers right here. <laughs> if you're not going to help me, then I'll have to find, she's, she's have to find the hubby. Oh, okay. I want this hubby right here. Okay? Okay, our first winner is, and you're going to watch all these movies tonight. Not, ne not necessarily in this order. The first, um, but maybe in this order, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, the first winner is Polybius, and um, directed by Jim Ke Jimmy Kelly of Mount Sinai, New York. Jimmy Kelly has been a working filmmaker Woo! since 2009. He graduated from the University of North Carolina School of the Arts in 2013. Yeah! He and his Writing partner, uh, writing and producing partner Michael Tuitt got a dozen friends and family members to help make the film. Jimmy and Michael based this sheriff character on beloved genre icon Tom Atkins. Yeah! And, and we're able to cast Tom Atkins in the movie. Yeah! So, so what we have here is a geeky 1980s kid who gets obsessed when a new video arcade cabinet rolls into the local magic shop and so he starts feeding the quarters until it starts frying his mind. Yes, we've seen it before, but have we seen it with Tom Atkins and a gratuitous reference to Halloween 3 framed by glorious 8-bit resolution graphics based on an urban legend? I think not. Drive-in totals on this film, one dead body. One sinister shopkeeper who might be in on the whole thing. Two investigating sheriff's deputies. Hefty moving guys going up and down inclines. Gawking teenage onlookers, including one with interesting sunglasses. Multiple polymorphic geometric structures with potential mind control powers. Multiple quarters wasted. Window driving, self-mutilation, bleeding eyeballs, brain frying, truancy, gratuitous back to the future reference, gratuitous longing gaze at a portrait, gratuitous forearm carving, interrogation foo, polygon foo, vector foo, geometry foo, dear diary foo, men in black foo, Atkins foo, four stars. Please enjoy your, this is, this is the Woo! Driving Academy Award. It's called the hubby because it's engraved on a, on a Chevy hubcap. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> All right. And by the way, we truly did have a blind uh, uh, voting this year. We had a, uh, a number of judges who, who voted on these movies, and these are absolutely the best movies that came through. Um, our second hubby winner of the night is Greywood's Plot. Josh and Dan, come on out. Yo. This was just an ad for steroids. Having the bre breast time. I'm having the breast time, one. which is the best time. I haven't tried this one it's yet. It's 3.30. I just peed. I've had a lot to drink. I think beer's going to drive to the hotel. I, These I shorts are, and features are great. Right the, side, the people are greater. There's it so much to tell you about the thing. second, the best, the, the greatest weekend of my life. But I'll do it when I can... You know more, or whatever, sober, bull, blah, blah, blah. All right. <laughs> it sucks that it's almost over. I'm gonna go lobby party, so maybe a little more vlog, but something I've been looking forward to for three days. The one thing I hate most about any convention or anything like this is goddamn weekend long wristbands. Biggest bane of my fucking convention existence, especially when I'm trying to shower or sleep. Mary's smart enough to make hers loose enough to come off and put back on. I'm afraid I'll lose mine if I do that. But Mary just reminded me, and she's gonna do the honors. What are you talking about? 
No, just get them. Just get them off okay, my fucking rib. You might have to do them. Oh, oh, you're you good. Can you not flex your fist upwards? You're good. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Freedom. If somebody has scissors pointing at you, you point the fist down. Freedom. All right, let's go do one last brief lobby party. It's early. I'm gonna die in the car. Mary's gonna drive home. But one last, one last beauty fam spin around with all my peeps we found out here. There's still more vlog. This is just the best part of it. Cracker Barrel. Oh. I missed. Nope. on the road I, with my marriage did like three hours or something not quite three hours but two and a half hours so I'm gonna do at least an hour and a half uh, had to stop I'll tell you a quick story but I know she's dying to get into these we found some cool snacks and she's like should we go it's like yeah so she's gonna try these for the first time I do not want to eat anything right now so mm -hmm. but I just figured sure I'll film it You. Uh, and speaking of which, I don't know if you noticed because I grabbed it while you, after we looked at everything, but I found bu uh, churro bugles. I saw that. Yeah, I thought you might appreciate those too. All right, quick story, and then I really want to get on the road. But uh, yeah, you know, we got out of the room early and everything, and I was late last night because there was a guy that was not great. I wanted to make sure everybody else was cool. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't really get to use the bathroom that well. I'm going to try to keep this as clean as I can. But man, we just went to this gas station. Lady was nice, super clean gas station. I was like, I, I'm gonna finally have to do it. There's no way I cannot use the bathroom for another three hours. And of course not peeing, peeing is no problem. But like public pooping is not my favorite thing to do. Man, that bathroom was gnarly. It was, I tried to clean it up, I couldn't. I had I had to, first time probably in my life, I had to do the hover and I'm old and heavy and that was not fun. <laughs> I think that's enough of that story. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get on the road. I'm gonna do some drive. Can't wait to see the kitties, so much to tell you. All right, well, since I'm not cooking, and Burger Week started, let me show you the Tuesday burger. I already figured what's on it, but it's got like grapes and wine reduction and gorgonzola and crispy onions. This is brew burger, and it looks awesome. I'm also having a salad, because after this weekend, Lord knows I need one. And wine. Pinot goes great with gorgonzola, or at least goes with blue cheese, so maybe gorgonzola as well. Um, so, yeah, and I have so much to tell you. This vlog ain't over yet. We still gotta review Thor and a whole bunch more. All right, I'm gonna eat. Okay, the Burger Week burger was pretty damn, pretty damn good. Um, me and I talk about Thor in a bit. Uh, wedding update. Uh, listen, we haven't done anything since last week. Joe Bob's Jamboree. Oh, I mean, actually, a little bit of wedding. Maybe, maybe we'll get to it. It relates to the Jamboree. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, hold on. I uh, I can do this online. I can't tell you what I'm gonna tell you yet because I don't wanna tell you the surprise. I gotta ask my dad. He spent, uh, he shouldn't have, but we spent a little more money than we meant to today. We'll get to that. Uh, let me say 12 pounds on Amazon, $55. Ha 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 ha, please. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm gonna take this time while Mary's finishing up outside to tell you some of the Jamboree stories. Cause I mean, you saw a lot of it. I kept a lot of it for myself, but man, somehow this fucking weekend topped last weekend. I shot a vlog, I mean last year's. Uh, this is the second Jamboree. And again, if you're new here, Joe Bob is uh, Joe Bob Briggs from Monster Vision. You remember back in the day when everybody was hosting movies? It never went away, but it was very popular for a while. Like I was an up all night guy originally. I was aware of Joe Bob. I'm into him in his retrospect. I think I got the go ahead. Um, retrospective. And, uh, you know, he came back on Shudder uh, with The Last Drive-In. And he has, like, a male girl. There's a whole shtick and a spiel going on there. And Darcy is her character. And <laughs> she kind of made all this happen. And she basically got Joe Bob together with a bunch of trauma people, which, once I found that out, I'm like, this makes so much sense why I love the crew of the show so much. Like, as actual people. Because I'm OG trauma people. Well, in certain regards. Uh, at least as a fan, if nothing else. And... Uh, <laughs> 
So he now has been back for a while. He broke Shutter. He's like the most popular thing on there. He trends number one on Twitter every Friday that his show actually plays. They just finished season four. And he hosts movies and they do bits and fun stuff. And that's the idea. So we started doing a convention last year. It was all at a drive-in. We saved the Mahoning drive-in, us mutant fans. We really saved it from being sold and destroyed. And it's a legendary place. And it was magical. And all of us people that live tweet on Twitter uh, through every Joe Bob episode, which is half the fun, we all got to meet in person. And like, it really is the mutant family. Those people are family. And you just felt it as soon as you got there. You can make friends with it's people who have been to horror conventions and stuff. It's not the same. This is something more magical. Like if you're into this group, because we're all fucking family, we're all taking care of each other. And uh, there was a lot of taking care of. And of course, you know, last year I got to do some amazing things with a lot of the crew, like I'm buddies with Justin Martell and Amy, you know, taking photos and, you know, I got to be good buddies with John Brennan, who's like the show's musical supervisor and he does a bunch of other stuff. And he produced Lloyd Kaufman's last film, Shakespeare Shitstorm. Justin produced like Class of Newcomb High 1 and 2, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a return to Class of Newcomb High 1 and 2, the newer ones. And, uh... Really good people, really good times. Darcy's amazing, Joe Bob is fun as hell. Even Mary likes Joe Bob, even though she doesn't like all the movies he plays. Um, but it was great, it was magical. I'm like, no way this year can top next year. Cause I got to do things last year that I haven't even talked about. And I still haven't released my vlog from last year because honestly, I just told every detail to the camera of everything that happened and I put it together and it's like four hours long. <laughs> and I have like 20 minutes of B-roll and most of that's concert footage I can't really throw in his B-roll, so, because John Brennan does the musical stuff, he has this amazing band, The Big Feet, he has albums out, it's weird, but like fucking awesome, punk fucking rock, and um, got to do a bunch of stuff with him, and uh, they play concerts at the drive-in as the sun's going down, then we get to the movies hosted by Joe Bob. Last year, they filmed an actual episode, hasn't come out yet, and apparently, it was a big deal to get in the live crowd and be up front, because they wanted to see my reactions, you know, because they know me as a reactor and stuff. So apparently that happened. This year they were, they had cameras, they've taped it, but it wasn't really intended to be a live show. So it may never come out, which was nice because then I didn't feel the pressure to try and be up front through the whole show. Uh, Cause that is one thing is some people got to, uh... <laughs> nice. Sorry, it's John Brennan messaging me back right now. You know what, fuck it, let's get to it. So, so much cool fucking stuff happened. Um, the best thing for me is this year, one of the additional guests is Jonah Ray, uh, Mystery Science Theater fame, and so much more, comedian. And if you don't know, he made this amazing pop punk album. And I, heard, I found out he's doing more, so I'm so excited. He's a huge Weird Al fan, but he doesn't consider himself like a lyricist, but he's a great fucking singer and a stage performer. Um, and he took lyrics to Weird Al songs. And with the band, they wrote like new punk rock tunes to it. So it's not straight up Weird Al covers, and he put that out, and it's an amazing album. And uh, Mary and I got to see him a while ago, do stand up, do that, and then riff a movie. And Mary's always joked about, did I have fun with my boyfriend? And I'm like, yes, you know, because I was so enamored with the guy. And he's just a cool guy. You just feel like he's a really cool guy. He fucking is. I got to hang out with him, as you probably saw this vlog, way too much. Um, but he was cool with it. We actually talked about it, because like I tell people, you know, I talk a lot, I hang out a lot, I like to party a lot. So if I'm being too much or you need me to fuck off for a minute, tell me to fuck off for a minute. I ain't gonna be offended, I totally get it. And I'll ask for anything I want, but I'm also very comfortable taking no. So if I ask you for something you don't wanna do, tell me no and don't feel bad about it. <laughs> but he was like telling me, he's like, no, I get that about you. He's basically, I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, I, I can tell you're a guy that knows how to read the room. You know, like you're definitely having fun, you're fun to talk to, but you know, if some other things come up or we wanna to talk to other people, you back off and go do your own thing. It's fucking great. Okay, so that was awesome. So I got to hang out with him a lot, a lot. There's more to that story. By the end of the weekend, uh, he was taking a picture of me and Mary. He's like, can I take a picture of y'all? And we, he, we're in his thank you post. Like he thanked, jo, jo, uh, jo, uh, thanked Joe Bob, Darcy, and Bad Techno. And uh, then he thanked me for like endless beer and all that stuff. You saw the beer bandolier. And I thought that was just, that was, that was fucking incredible. And you saw it in his eyes. He was having a blast talking about in his post that this was a weird, he didn't expect it. He knew he would have fun, but he met so many great people. He wasn't expecting it to be like a weirdo summer camp for horror fans. And I, he was talking to me about like, he just can't wait to come back next year and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, they haven't planned next year. It's not like, he's like, oh, they've already invited me back as a guest. I mean, maybe they did, but he just wants to be there. <laughs> and he did some of his call me out set, which you saw in there with John Brandon, the big feet. And in case I don't say anything about it, cause I don't want a four hour vlog here. Shout out to fucking Jimmy 
uh, my, the drummer, my guy, Screeching Weasel Buds, Wiggle, best album, fuck yeah, killer fucking drummer too. Um, so anyways, whole band, Levi, who if you are a Last Drive-In fan, he does the acoustic, the, what I got to tell Jonah, I now consider the mutant version of Movie Sign, he got a kick out of that. And uh, of course, fucking Joe, fucking cool, fucking laid back Joe on bass up there, that dude, he's, he's a fucking sweetheart, I love him. Met a bunch more of the crew, and uh, Cass kind of became friends with some of the other crew. Uh, finally got to meet Yuki. He's such, he's so adorable. He's so cute. Met Honey the male girl, Joe Bob's original male girl, and a whole lot more. Um, I'm trying to really keep it to like the major stories, but I want to save the circle pit story for Mary. Other than, I, I will go ahead and set it up. If you know circle pits, like a mosh pit, but everybody's running around in a circle. And Jimmy, every time, was just yelling out, all right, but I want to see you circle, I want to see the circle pit get going. Well, let's open up the pit. And at one point, they were, uh, there was a dad out there that requested they sing happy birthday to his, their younger daughter. You know, it's like, you think it'd be weird to bring him in, but it's not. Um, and then Br Brennan's up there like, you know, we shouldn't swear because he's gonna film for like, so when he films, like, let's, let's try to keep it chill. And they start filming, it's like, hey, we're gonna do happy birthday. And Jimmy's like, yeah, I wanna see that circle pit. <laughs> They're like, you can't circle pit to happy birthday. Um, was what they were saying on stage. But I mean, it's just a fucking amazing time. And John Brennan, they played uh, Friday night and uh, did some cool shit. And then uh, Saturday they played, they did a Metallica medley, a, a Killer Ramones medley, at which point, uh, cause he, you know, John and I, we've done some things. He knows I can, I can, he, he is adamant that my album, What I Know Right Now is a great pop punk album. Like he's made me start appreciating it more. And like, he was telling Jonah and a bunch of people when I was giving some out, like that is a legit great pop punk album. And I was like, oh God damn bro. I love you so much, John. Um, so that is just fantastic, and I just, I know, I know he's super genuine about it. So, uh, you know, he shoved the mic down when he maybe needed a breath or whatever during the Ramones, totally understandable. During KKK took my baby away, he let me do a whole verse and chorus. Some other guy got to sing something too, and he was pretty good. But apparently they put me on camera when I was doing that, and you know me, I really fucking did it. I wasn't like just screaming from the crowd, I was like, no, I'm, he's giving me a chance, I'm fucking performing this song. And apparently they had the camera on me, and then I started hearing from everybody later, I was like, oh man, we, we saw you singing that song, you were great. And then Sunday when I went to <laughs> talk to Felissa Rose for a bit, we bowled with at Scarefest last year and Dave shared and I gotta tell you about that because you saw some. Um, she was like, before I could say much of anything, she's like, oh, I saw you singing the Ramones the other night. You were so great. I was like, fuck yeah. Hell yeah, Felissa. Felissa knows how to party. We love her. <sighs> and apparently I want to talk to Dave more too because he had to go off to a signing, but I gave him one of my CDs and my copy of Zeppo. And he was, I was leaving, he's like, definitely come see me more at Scarefest because I want to talk about music with you. It's like, all right, bro. So I uh, might make some new friends there too. Um, Jonah's set was incredible with that sunset and we had beautiful weather Saturday, especially as hot as it was out there. Cause it was like hundred degree temps even when the sun went down out there. So again, I was making sure people stayed hydrated with water. Like we kept restocking with beer. We took a shit ton of water up there to give out to people. Cause as I kept saying, mutant family takes care of mutant fam. And I'm not the only one. Um, this one podcast that is amazing, uh, like monster movie. God damn it. They, they make, they like, they pair drinks and stuff. They brought a fucking portable bar and they were making people like margaritas and rum and Cokes. And, and again, they did it for tips, but their shit cost more than what I was spending. So I get that, but I was just giving my shit out for free, you know, but still they were giving those drinks out for free. Um, and they were just so fucking lovely. Got to meet so many mutants I hadn't met yet. Got to actually, cause that was my thing. Last year I regretted not meeting more of my fellow mutants. I met a bunch. So this year I was like, yeah, I gotta talk to everybody. Like fucking uh, Gringo Fantastico, who uh, you can check, he hosts movies. He's fucking hilarious, luchador. And um, he's doing a season on Troma now. He's already filmed it. Like Troma, wanted, they gave him money to make a whole season. So that's incredible. Fucking shout out to Reeves if he's listening. He didn't get a drink party so much in the early days because he was the one driving talent back and forth. Uh, speaking of which, when they did Halloween 3, which is a whole thing, long story short, because again, I can't have this be too long, I had a great memory from Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins, like, I was standing, I usually learned to hang out around the RV because that's where a lot of the celebrities and the people involved in the show hang out. And um, <laughs> when Tom Atkins gets brought up, he comes over to me, for whatever reason, he chose me, and he's asking me about Joe, Bob, and Darcy. He's like, so are they, are they married? And I thought he was just kind of joking. I was like, ha, yeah, no, it's just all a shtick and blah, blah. He's like, no, for real, are they married? I was like, oh, um, I, I really don't think so. I don't know 100%, but I'm pretty sure, no, they're just really good friends. He's like, okay, okay. So when he went up the stage, like, and Darcy has a huge crush on him. 
I think we all do. Have you seen that man's mustache? Um, but uh, like he goes up and like gives her a big kiss on like the side of her head and stuff. And she was just like having the vapors for a minute, you know, I was like, and I realized in hindsight, it's like, oh, that's why he was asking me. Cause he's probably like, listen, if they're actually married, I'm not gonna go up right in front of her husband and do that, you know, or maybe he would have asked or something. But I thought that was really sweet. And then just seeing him, at one point in the, in the whole thing, he's being asked a question. He gets distracted because he, and he was right. He stopped and looks, he's like, wow, what a beautiful moon. Because again, we're on a stage at a drive-in and it was a beautiful moon. That day was just gorgeous in Memphis. I don't know if I mentioned that. And it's so cute and charming. And the whole Halloween thing three was great. Uh, Saturday they did Rock and Roll High School, which I desperately wanted to see, but that's when I ended up really hanging out with Jonah. And I even went through my head. It's like, oh, this is the thing I really wanted to see. But I had to tell myself, well, I've, I've at least seen like a hundred other Joe Bob hosted movies. If I miss this one, I'll, you know, like this experience hanging out with Jonah and having this conversation, way, way unrepeatable. So <laughs> I made the right choice. Uh, all right, let's just go to Sunday because I, I need to wrap this up. Sunday, um, they oh, so there's a movie called Hogzilla that Joe Bob is in. It's kind of awful, but in a, I think a lovable way. The cast and crew, or the yeah, cast and crew of the last drive-in ended up actually finishing that movie because it never got finished, so they could put it on the last drive-in. And Joe Bob, like to embarrass Joe Bob in a sort, so that's kind of the running gag with it. So this year, <laughs> the director of the show, Austin, who's awesome. And has, of course, they've all been invited to my wedding. If, if, if they aren't filming, some of them I think are actually coming. I was like, I'll, I will make it work for you. I'll get you hotel rooms, whatever. Uh, but, uh, fuck, it's hot. <laughs> it's getting better, but also I'm getting excited right here. Um, so it's, it's Austin, it was Darcy, it was John Brennan, and it was uh, uh, Jonah Ray. And they did a live riff session of Hogzilla. And they made Joe Bob sit in a chair with the audience at the front of the stage and watch it. And they gave him a mic that comes in in a minute. And they set a mic to the side of the stage for the audience to throw out riffs. And if you like got a good one, they were gonna like give you a t-shirt. And if you were really awful, they had the right to rip you a new one and tell you to sit down. <laughs> and it was supposed to be one riff per person, but a lot of people just, we all just kind of hung around the microphone and waited for that right thing to come in. And some people did multiples, but it was never like, annoying like everybody was real chill and respectful um about that nobody was really hogging the microphone everybody gave everybody their chance and there was some great stuff but they ran out of t-shirts quick and john had like a few vhs's he ran out of those quick joe bob got one quip in <laughs> so the whole thing was like you get a t-shirt you know or you get a vhs so joe bob got a good riff in <laughs> and, and john was like yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And I, I was already running over to grab it and run it to joe bob because there was a distance and john's like oh yeah eric run this over to joe bob. i was like yeah yeah i got you um, so they kind of started running out of things. They started giving out beers from their coolers and they were joking like, um, you get a water. <laughs> and they were joking like, we're gonna have to start giving away pieces of ice in a minute. So I ran, I, cause I was done drinking beer for the week. <laughs> we restocked every day. Um, I ran out and grabbed every fucking beer I had left and as many waters as I could fit in my arms and my, my, uh, my coat, my holsters and all that. And I just went down there and started stacking everything on the stage and they're all like, oh my God, thank you, thank you. And um, other people start putting stuff up there too. So then it became like, you get a beer, you get a beer, oh, you don't drink, you get a water, you know, go up there and pick out whatever you want, <laughs> that kind of thing. So that was so much fun. The two best things is I had a, I got a killer response for my one riff I threw out there. Um, I'm sure I don't have it on, like all the coolest things that happened to me, I didn't have on camera because I wasn't filming at that point. I was enjoying the whole situation. But uh, there's this one part in the movie where like a, a big storm comes in and like their tents blowing away and they're all rushing to get in their cars. And last year at the Mahoning, the first day, the only bad part was there was a big monsoon that came in, blew away a bunch of vendor tents, everybody's rushing to get in their cars. So I run over and go, oh, so this movie was filmed at the Mahoning last year? And they're like, oh shit. And even Darcy's like, oh. Like you, you saw her just kind of pop out of her seat, like, oh my God. So, um, so that was amazing. <laughs> Um, and then I'll never forget this, especially because he keeps tweeting it or like commenting it now with John. Early in the movie, they were describing like a hog somebody had caught and they're like, it's uh, 15 inches from base to tip. He goes, yeah, 15 inches from base to tip, like Eric Butts. <laughs> and then everybody starts chanting my name. Uh, of course, there is the legendary Gerald. Gerald gets a lot of tweet chants because everybody who meets him, you just fall in love with him. He's so kind and loving and very helpful, like trying to get disperse information that's not getting dispersed or making sure people are taken care of. 
he inspired me to be better at doing that at these things, you know. Um, so he's definitely one of the legends and he was getting shouted out and chanted a lot. So there's a lot of Gerald, Gerald. And I would get a lot of either Eric, Eric, or occasionally Eric Butts, Eric Butts. So, you know, I fucking love that. And he keeps, now John keeps commenting 15 inches base to tip on a bunch of my fucking posts, pictures and shit. So I fucking love that. I'll always cherish that memory. And then uh, Sunday night they did the film festival. Man, Greywood's plot. I don't know if that movie's been distributed. I'm looking into it. And I missed the first 30 because I was kind of hanging out and talking with John. But that movie goes some very interesting places. You know, low budget, made outside of the system, room for improvement. But I mean, it is good. Like, it is worth checking out if you can. And so is a lot of the other stuff, too. So congratulations to all the short film and feature. I'm talking so much, I'm running out of breath. <sighs> People. Uh, Mary and I had some great barbecue there. I had this... Uh, like pound hot dog that had baked beans in it and pulled pork and coleslaw and french fries all on the hot dog. Their sauce, they had a habanero barbecue sauce. It was so good, I bought a quart to bring home. Uh, it's called One and Only. I'm sure Memphis people know because this amazing night clerk, the, the lady running the desk at the Hotel Memphis. Hi, Ava. I don't know if this will actually get you, but we love you. She is absolutely one of us. Not only because she loves horror and she just thought we were all so nice and charming, but we found out her favorite horror film is the original Last House on the Left and it's like, Damn, all right, that's that's pretty hardcore, you know? So um, as far as what you would expect. <laughs> so so we were all trying to just take care of her, make sure she had the greatest time. But when I told her we uh, we had barbecue finally, and before I could even finish saying one and only, she started dancing a happy dance, like, and she beat me to it. One and only, it's my favorite. And I was like, oh good, I chose well. Oh my God. We partied in the hotel lobby almost every night. I was last man standing every night, even though Sunday I didn't mean to, but that's a whole other story, but I'm, it, Almost everybody, we, we kind of ran into one guy that was not having a good time. And I was just trying to get him on some kind of the same page, you know? Cause again, we can all be different in the way we see things and do things, but if, you, if you're gonna be kind of a, a jerk about things, you're gonna kind of get shunned. That's all it is. Like, we don't care what you believe, what you're into. Just don't be a jerk. <laughs> and it's one of those where they thought everybody else was the jerk, but it's like, ah, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying, but anyways, I'm not gonna go into the details of that because I don't want to shit on anybody. And uh, not like that, especially. Oh, but it was so hot. And like people like Kurt and fucking Lee and uh, you know, some of the, uh, TJ, uh, who does some amazing art for Joe Bob. Um, I'm sure I'm going to miss some names here. Please don't hold it against me. John, Tombs, Alex, I'll write on Twitter with all his giveaways. Um, like, oh, uh, 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 Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Detroit. I don't know his real last name, but we know Jimmy Detroit. We gave him a ride back to the hotel Sunday while he's waiting on an Uber. He's like, ah, I'm trying to get an Uber. I was like, well, fuck, you know what? I know you now. Uh, I was like, fuck, we can clear the back seat. We're going to the same place. And uh, yeah, Saturday, uh, my buddy Jacob, who lives here, I know from Mary and doing karaoke, we never had any idea he was a mutant fan until recently. And that's its own story, but I've got too many stories here. Uh, he was there for the first one, and I was just enamored with seeing the magic in his eyes of feeling how special this was. And I was like, yeah, man, I remember that. That was what it was like last year. It's this way again. And we were drinking in the parking lot. He was at the hotel across the street to like 6.30 in the morning because he's a writer, and we've been talking some things. And uh, we both had to be like, we have got to stop telling more stories because we need to go to bed. Um, Tim Capello, sexy shirtless sax guy from Lost Boys. Still fucking got it. He oh, he warmed up the crowd with the big feet Friday night, and then he did. I still believe, and I still fucking believe. And then you saw that version of Shout where Dave Sheridan, in character as off in full costume as Officer Doofy from the scary movie, you know the parody of Scream and such, get up there with Felissa Rose and Kelly Maroney, like icons of horror in their own right, and the big feet, and does the whole fucking song in character. It was beautiful. <laughs> The Elvis impersonator who did way more songs than he was supposed to. He was supposed to do like two or three songs. I think he did like eight. Um, and at first I thought maybe they were just having miscommunication. But then, <laughs> honestly, in hindsight, I think he just, he probably gets good crowds, you know, when he does his Elvis thing. But I'm thinking this was a crowd unlike anything he had performed for because he had this riled up like punk rock metal crowd. And he was getting that kind of response from like a few thousand people. And he's like, I just won't keep going, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? So John Brennan, I, the, my tweet, if you didn't see it, is something along the lines of, I didn't know watching John Brennan, James Brown, Elvis, off the stage of a drive-in, because he won't stop playing so many songs, was on my bucket list. 
but it should have been because that was amazing and he was great. And apparently I did something awesome. The camera cut to me on, he did Sweet Caroline and well, I'm white. It's just conditioned even though I don't care for the song to do the bop, bop, bop. You just have to. It's a white people thing. It's in our blood somehow. I don't know how that happened. Uh, <laughs> I'm just making stupid jokes. Uh, but apparently that was cool. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to hit the big beats now. Of course, Joe Bob was great in all his commentary on all the films, the hubby winners. Uh, that's the hubcaps award for the film festival. Only thing is the longest day was the last day. It's like, can we not have Sunday run till 4 a.m. like it did? Because <laughs> a lot of us got to get up in the morning and get the hell out of Dodge. But of course I ran into everybody in the lobby again. We were still partying, you know, Nate was there. Oh, Mitch, I should give some love to Mitch. That guy is fucking awesome. Alex, uh, party with him last year too. We were some of the first people in the pit last year. Um, yeah, I fucking moshed, I'm 43, I don't know. We did get a brief circle pit going, which since Mary's not here, I'll tell you this story. Let's go out on this story. Um, so this is Saturday, and I don't remember what the song was, but I had asked Mary to bring me down some more beers from the car, and then Alex starts a circle pit, and like nobody's joining, but after his first loop, well, I'm like, well, fuck this, I'm in too, so I start running around with the whole crowd, and I'm just having a good time, and I was like, Mary's gonna bring me those beers. And uh, apparently, because Jonah told me after, he's like, you know the sweetest thing I saw all weekend, I was like, man, what? He's like, well, you were doing the circle pit, which was pretty fucking awesome. And then I saw you saw Mary coming down with some beers, and I thought, because I didn't know y'all, you know, that, that well or anything, and I didn't know her that much, especially because Mary mostly hung in the car because she was really hot. Um, I was partying, so I didn't notice that I was hot <laughs> till after. Uh, but he saw her coming down with some beers, and he's like, oh no, is this is this gonna go sideways? Is she gonna see him? like doing what he's doing and be all like, what are you doing, you know? Like, Cause he didn't know, I was like, oh. but he said, but then I saw her do the stance, which I can't do it, but it's like, like the like if you're handing waters to a runner stance with the beer. <laughs> and she did, cause I thought it was awesome. I go by and I grab one beer. And as I go around the loop, I'm putting it in my, in my beer uh, bandolier. And I come around, I grab another beer, I put that in my bandolier. And Jonah likes IPAs, I don't, but I bought him some specific, so she brought that down. And as I go for the third one, I point, and I'm like, that's for Jonah. <laughs> and I take up running around. And he was just so enamored with that. And I think that's part of why Sunday he was like, can I get a picture of you two? Because I guess as some of you know, or at least think, not everybody, and that's fine. But Mary and I tend to be pretty fucking cute and nerdy and lovable. <laughs> and now I just love the deluge of people being excited. I should say hi to John. Let's throw that out there. As, as I'm remembering people, are, I know I'm going to miss a lot of you, and I'm sorry, but I do love you. And uh, I don't know where I was going, but listen, I'm so happy I got to meet all the people I did. The only problem with meeting more and more people every year is I'm gonna have less and less time to hang out with everybody I want to, but especially, and I also wanna point this out there too, that if you are a mutant family and you're not big into drinking or any of that stuff, please know that it's not a clicky thing. Like I could see how from the outside it might seem like, oh, that's like the drunken party click, <laughs> but you're welcome to hang out with us. I mean, if you can put up with us, and no one's gonna force anything on you. And if they do, let us know, we'll stop them because mutant fam takes care of mutant fam. But um, yeah, so I guess the only other thing is I was first in line ever for anything. I met Joe, Bob and Darcy a few times through the, through the weekend. And the last time was at the drive-in for a VIP meet and greet. Ended up accidentally first in line because I kind of knew it was coming, which was great. Oh, actually, one more story before the Joe, Bob meet and greet. Uh, I don't know. I got too many. I got too many fucking stories. All right, fuck it. The Joe Bob meet and greet. Uh, they had these Joe Bob pillows. Uh, they, were, they were like, the guy came out and said, we're gonna do a special, two for 50. I was like, I want it. Mary talked me down. She's like, what are you gonna do with two of them? And Joe Bob comes out. He's like, we're doing a special. And I'd really appreciate it if y'all pick these up because I really don't want to take them home. <laughs> so I was like, sold. I remember what I was gonna tell you. And you know what? They came in super handy on the drive home because two of them were perfect between the window and the headrest for my head to find somewhere comfortable to sleep because I needed it. I got like two, two and a half hours of sleep. And I was still drunk when I woke up. And we tried to go to Cracko Barrel and there was a half an hour wait. And it's like, fuck it, we're going to Waffle House. And it was the nastiest fucking Waffle House I've ever been to. Um, but yeah, uh, but the thing I was gonna tell you is Saturday night, we knew Joe, Bob and Darcy would be exhausted. We're partying in the lobby. And of course we're respectful as they walk through. It's like, well, we don't wanna, you know, we don't wanna stop them, make them any sleepier or tired. Or, so my whole side, and I thought Gerald ran over to get the other side to do it, but he, did, he wasn't either able to or didn't communicate it properly. But my whole side, we lined up on the side of the hallway and just stood there in salute. <laughs> and we saw Joe Bob recognize it. And he kind of double take, like at first, like, you know, polite smile, and kind of look back like, 
Oh, that's really cute, y'all. I mean, he didn't say that, but you just kind of saw it on his very exhausted face. I did not go to the 10 a.m. Sunday Graceland because I knew there was no way in hell I was gonna actually wake up. And I'm so glad I did because they regretted waking up. Although I do kind of regret not seeing it, but at the end of the day, I had every penny worth of those expensive, but every penny that was spent on those VIP tickets and staying in the, in the con hotel, I got way more enjoyment out of it than, it than I actually paid for and way more memories. And I'm glad I'm wrapping this up in half an hour, even though I'm sure there was other things I want to tell you. Maybe I'll tell you someday, but uh, damn. All right, uh, we still got to review Thor and tell you a little bit of wedding update that relates to the Jamboree. There's no games, no gaming, no time. Did not take the Xbox, thought about it, but I didn't. And that's that, all right, let's move on. She's in aggressive need of love and smell. Don't let her on your back again. <laughs> she, yeah, she decided to jump from my back when I wasn't expecting it. She's adorable though. All right, I got something to show you. Yeah. Okay, this shouldn't have happened, but it did. Um, I, I actually started stringing guitars while we were out there. I haven't done that in a long time. That's a story I maybe don't want to tell you. Uh, why, why, uh, 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 what's the word? First world problems? Yes. Anyways, I needed to go to Guitar Center today because I needed string clippers and some more strings because I want to clean up all my guitars and start showing them to you. I was not even going to look at the guitars because it would be dangerous. I've already spent way too much money this weekend. I think you know where this is going. Um, <laughs> Then dad was like, hey, oh, you know what? I really like that orange hollow body Gretsch over there. I'm like, oh, I do too. That's pretty nice, but I'm, I'm not going to look at guitars. He goes over and looks at it. And then he comes over like, yeah, that's pretty nice. And I'm like, well, but what is it? Like $8.99? Yeah. He's like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, uh, cool, but yeah. And then I was like, well, crap. Now that you went and looked at guitars, I'm going to go over there and look at guitars. I've want, been wanting a shredding metal guitar really bad. And then I saw this and I don't own, I, this would be my first Dean. And it was reasonably priced. I mean, I know this may sound expensive to some, but compared to most of my guitar prices, this was $4.29. Mary, would you like to show them how I'm about to save my friends on the upside down? Whoa! Look at, no, look at this fucking thing. Look at this beautiful Dean, man. We got the Floyd Rose Tremolo on here, the black and white pickups. I thought, I can change it if I want, but I'm kind of digging on this hot pink strap with it. I think it's like, that's what takes it from metal to fucking punk, motherfucking rock. And, uh, you can't tell that I already popped a E string up here. So I, <laughs> glad I bought more strings because I already have to restring this and I've never stringed that a Floyd Tremolo. So I'm gonna learn that tonight. But anyways, welcome my new baby, Inspired. I've already written the most badass riff on this thing. I love it, that's it. <laughs> let me let, get Mary get her alarm. Okay, I'm filming in here because this is the second place, coldest place in the house and I'm getting warm. Um, and if I, I changed the shirt for the photos because that pink strap wasn't gonna show up on. But anyways, um, Fuck it, I'll tell you my what we discovered first world problems. I didn't realize how ridiculous I am. Now keep in mind, I've been collecting guitars for like 30 years, so I have a lot of guitars. We're counting electric basses, acoustics, things like that, we're over 20. Um, I kind of realized I haven't changed strings on any guitar in like 10 years, because this wasn't necessarily my intention, but it kind of worked out that every time my strings kind of got old or bad or broken, I just got a new guitar. <laughs> so when I told Mary, I actually, I got a new guitar. <laughs> Went to buy strings, got a new guitar. She said, how much do you actually hate changing strings? So again, I'm not saying that to brag. I, I just, I had to give you that context for the comedy of the story. And yeah, I, I know. But also, you know, I mean, I do a lot with them. And my theory on, for me, this is gonna be different for everybody, but obviously cer certain guitars very much have different tones that are very obvious. Some are very subtle, but at the very least for me, each guitar feels different, you know, because it looks different. It gives me a different vibe, a different attitude. It makes me feel different. And since music is feeling, you know, the feelings I'm feeling change what I'm writing and they can very much influence. So like if I throw that metal fucking guitar on, I'm gonna do more shredding, more dark, heavy shit. You know, I'm not gonna do like strummy, full punk on that. And I mean, I might, <laughs> you know, versus if I put on typical Strat, then you can go into kind of any style, you know, and things like that. Tellies, I tend to want to go a little more oldie style, things like that. So I do have reasons, they do speak to me. They are my babies. And uh, one of these days I'll make a video about all my guitars, but I'm gonna get them all cleaned up and restrung and all of that. So I'll... Now let's let's talk about Wedding and, and Thor. And then maybe I'll shoot the wrap up. And that way I, I don't have to film any of this Wednesday, I can just edit it. Sounds good, all right. Okay, Wedding Update with the fan. <sighs> um, 
I'm gonna do most talking here because I'm really mo probably the only one with updates. <laughs> Mostly, I just figured Mary should be in the wedding update and she, yeah. she has anything to say. I, I'm not even sure what he's getting ready to say. So. Mostly about how I talked to some of the Joe Bob crew. Oh, uh, that. <laughs> and uh, there's basically two parts. Well, there's three parts to this. So the first thing is the first night was a Friday. Yeah, Friday we went down to the signing area with Joe Bob and Darcy. Decided to get in the line because it wasn't that long and we figured, ooh, Friday might be our best bet. Well, it's not that long. And uh, told him a little bit about the wedding and some other things. And I was like, you know, yeah, I mean, I know you probably wouldn't, but y'all are w welcome to invite you. You can come on down. Because tell them about the menu. And I was like, it's, it's next to the uh, historic Kentucky Theater. And then Darcy's like, well, I mean, maybe if you can get him to book How Redneck Saved Hollywood. And I was like, we might be able to do that. I have a question. Uh-huh. Do you know if Joe Bob flies at all, or does he drive? Yeah, no, he'll fly. They okay. drive whenever they can, but he will fly. Okay. Um, I was just wondering. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's highly unlikely, but might as well look into it. Have him put on that show on a Friday, and then Joe Bob and Darcy will come to the wedding. Uh, the more likely of all of it, again, I didn't, the sad thing is Justin and Amy, they, they apparently took their first like real vacation in seven or 17, I think seven years. Seven uh, years sounds more appropriate. Right. So they didn't, uh, come. That's like the only bummer of the whole weekend, but I totally get it. Um, but I was talking to John cause I know Justin, and, I wasn't bumping you for you. I just accidentally bumped you. Um, uh, John Brennan. And I mentioned it to him, and like he was legit, like down and interested. And but he was like, I think that's when we're filming the new season. And he's been like 20 minutes trying to find this. He's like, I got so many texts, I can't find it. So he couldn't remember the date. So he's gonna look into the dates, and he's basically told me, like, because I was, I told him like I'd get him a room or whatever, because you know, I know they, they didn't have the money to spend, but and I would love to have him. So I was like, uh, so he's like, basically, if we can find out if we aren't shooting yet, I, I would love to come now. So I was like, fuck yeah. So that may happen. And then the third part of that is Austin, the director. Now I have a theory. I, I didn't give you the whole story, but I did tell you about the guy at the end of the night. I didn't realize at the time, but he was talking to Austin in the elevator lobby when Manny and I were coming to go to our room. And I uh, just was like, hey, Austin, blah, blah, And then I mentioned something. I don't know how we got to it, but somehow I was like, well, I mean, you know, we're our wedding in September. Hey, and he's like, oh, congrats, blah, blah, blah. Like, hey, man, I'm inviting like John and Justin and all them. It's like, you're invited too if you want to come. He's like, you know what? I just might uh, get John Brennan the details and he'll let me know and we'll see what we can do. I was like, mm -hmm. all right, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, I don't really think it's gonna work out for anybody, but maybe, and that'd be pretty neat. What was that breeze over there? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think that's the wedding update. I, I really need to write the... You need to what? I thought I really would write the save the date, give me your email information for proper thing tonight, but now I'm like, but I have this guitar and this song I really want to record. Ah, we have a winner for the new excuse. <laughs> All right, everybody, Mary will, get, Mary will check the board and your betting slips, and uh, she'll be in touch shortly. <laughs> oh, plus my buddy uh, Reeves, he made a movie that's coming out on Troma, and he also messaged me tonight about, hey, man, you want to review this? I was like, fuck yeah. And I'm like, man, if, I wish he'd send it to me tonight because I'm really in the mood to watch Troma movies. <laughs> so we'll get there. We'll get there. Mm. Oh, love and thunder. I don't know what that face is supposed to be. <laughs> okay, you know, I love Marvel. You know I love it. Um, I fucking loved it. I had a blast. I get if like you if you don't like Goofy Thor like the last movie, but I fucking loved it. And of course you probably know I am there for Natalie Portman as the Mighty Thor and she did not disappoint. <laughs> so we'll get into some non-spoilers, but some details, but Mary General thoughts. I enjoyed it. I'm not sure if I think I enjoyed it about on par with Ragnarok. I could see that. Uh, it's, I, don't, I don't know if it's the lack of Loki or... Uh, That's fair. That's fair. But, but at, the, at the same time, we got more uh, as a Korg. Yeah, Korg. Uh, which is fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and more about Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course, I liked it the most, but that's also because I... I <sighs> For me, it's, a, it's the Mighty Thor movie, and I like that character a lot in the comics, and I think they really did that justice, but then on top of that, my Natalie Portman crush, damn. I'm like trying to get married to cosplay for <laughs> Halloween. Yeah, and I get it, maybe it's a little bit jokier and stuff, and um, you know, but I liked the scope and the scale of the story and what they did with the characterizations, and it had crying at the end, and Christian Bale, I thought, was phenomenal in this. He was legit menacing and terrifying, and I've heard they had to cut a bunch of stuff out 
of his because it was too scary for like a PG-13 Marvel kind of film. And after I saw the movie, I'm like, I could, I could totally believe that. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I wonder if he kind of went, you know, uh, uh, oh crap, what's this? Uh, what am I saying? Blank thing I was thinking, Joker. Joaquin Phoenix or Joker. oh Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger that makes sense I was just like it's just like you know I because I, 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 I can kind of see where he kind of took a, a more sane Joker if that makes sense I could see that yeah because he's obviously his character is kind of having fun being yeah what he is too at times there, there is one scene where he's, he is it has a very sort of Joker vibe sinister to grins it. and stuff yeah and the his idea of humor yeah yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and and this is not really a spoiler because it's just a surprise. But there's like legit like monster stuff in here, like mini designs, and they're creepy and awesome as fuck. And like, you know, kind of like out of a nightmare version of a Dungeons and Dragons book. And I was like, oh, I didn't know we we're getting that bonus. So, <laughs> um, you know, and I, I thought the costumes were really great. I mean, again. Sure, a lot of people are gonna disagree to each their own. I mean, I, d I don't need a lot from a Marvel movie. I wanna go in and be entertained for the couple of hours and I was thoroughly entertained. Um, yeah, uh, this isn't a spoiler because it's in the We'll trailers. see, okay, okay. Uh, but just, I, I cannot wait for it to come out on like, on demand. Oh, okay, or yeah. So, so I can get Ooh. a full on. Did they reveal what that place was to general audiences in the trailer? If you know what the flick is. Okay, well here, how about this? I know how to set it up for you. The place where Russell Crowe's character, because that's clearly in the trailer. The place where they go to talk to Russell Crowe's character. Yes, it, which we it's know very is clear in the trailer. There's a bunch of other entities there. There you go, perfect. I can't wait for the breakdown of that. Yeah, there you go. And oh my God, just the costuming and everything on, on that scene. It's just like, no, I need to, I, can we stay here a little longer? I want to look at yeah. some stuff. Yeah, even in the theater, like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Audience got lots of laughs. Now we saw this at the Malco uh, Paradiso in IMAX, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty nice. Uh, it, it's Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, Memphis, Tennessee. We don't have Malco's here. Uh, Regal's still my favorite. Uh, I just signed up for Regal Unlimited and I'm almost already made my money back. Uh, <laughs> But, um, you know, if Malco comes to Lexington, we'll talk. Uh, but uh, their IMAX, they had more seats. It was maybe a little bigger than ours, but they had a lot more seats. It's definitely bigger than ours. But not a lot, really, when you break it down, because we have a lot less seats, but ours are, like, way more spaced out and recliners. Um, yeah, theirs yeah, were nice had, seats, but they were... It's a slightly bigger theater with probably double the seats. Right, and they don't recline. And everybody's definitely a little tighter in together and all yeah, that. Yeah, so you could really, like, lean back. Like, right. Like, yeah, um, but I think I did pretty good not knowing their layout. I got perfect center. I wasn't sure if I'd get it, but you know, I probably could have gotten a row or two back if they were available, but that was probably the best I could. You know what? We might want to, you might want to, I see that look. You might want to get, but I want, put, put, put. All right, itty bit, we, we won't take too much longer. Back on you, itty bit. Not again. <laughs> oh. oh, she meeped. Um, but yeah, I had a really good time with this. I'm trying to remember what the post scenes were. This weekend was a blur. I mean, obviously we can't say it out loud. I just wanted to tell you, it's like, oh, this was cool, that was cool. Uh, oh, I, I know, I remember what one of them was. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember a certain place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really nice and uh, brings some additional hope to things. It wasn't like anything major universe connected per se. Yeah. I guess it could be though. Sort of a throwaway, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I it was more of a throwaway <laughs> joke, right? Yeah, we've had a very busy weekend, a very exhausting weekend, obviously. But yeah, no, I mean, I loved it. I'm planning on going and seeing it in 3D with my Regal Unlimited. <laughs> and um, I can't, I can't, I can't get away from you. Yeah, I kind of feel like, like there's, was good. There, there's an epilogue at the end, and it's like sorting out mid credit scenes from the epilogue is where I'm getting tripped up. Yeah. But it was, it was a good time. I loved Russell Crowe in it. He was a blast. Everybody was a blast. And I don't think Hemsworth was like a total buffoon the whole time. Like he played Thor pretty funny, like he is. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. there was some serious stuff in there too. And he had some real emotion to give. And uh, this, I'll just say the stuff with Stormbreaker, if you know what we're talking about, <laughs> that's hilarious. And let's just say the whole opening with the Guardians, cause you know they're in there from the trailer. <laughs> and the fight that Thor ensues. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get the references they're making in that, it's 10 times funnier. 
And uh, again, highly love it, cannot wait. And I just realized uh, what we do in the shadows started today. So, woohoo! <laughs> we barely have time to watch anything. We have a lot of stuff. So we're gonna shut up and move on. Sound good? Anything yeah. else you wanna say about Thor's? We can't really, with no spoilers, but. It's but fun. I think most if, people are gonna enjoy it. If you like Ragnarok, you'll like this. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. But if you're more a fan of the first two Thor's, you might have more problems with this and be slightly disappointed in things. But if you like the more, Thor is over. I, I, just, I nearly fell out my chair once and they came on my boss was like, wait, tell me that they didn't like her. I was just like, I didn't like it as much as the other ones. I'm like, Oof. okay, I mean, to each their own. And I will say, lots of audience laughs, and at the end, it wasn't immediate applause, but some dude did start some applause, so there was some yeah. applause in the theater, which I know is still silly, but I don't know, it kind of adds to the fan experience. And the uh, Malco uh, frozen margaritas, quite nice. <laughs> Although don't try to chug half of one when you got five minutes till movie time. Oh, also, 10 minutes of trailers at the Malco and IMAX. Yeah. Not 20. Glad we got to our seat. Glad we didn't play it yet, because I was like, I don't know this chain. Maybe we shouldn't wait that 15 we always wait, so. All right, arm's tired. We need to watch uh, probably the boys finale. Yeah. What I'm thinking we'll get in tonight so we'll get it spoiled. Then we can watch both Kamala's tomorrow and Only the Murders in the Building and what we do in the shadows and sh uh, I feel like something else. And also now we probably have Strange New Worlds. Oh, we have the Strange New Worlds finale. <sighs> you don't get to have all my time. No, I know. But <laughs> these are shows you want to watch too. I know, but I All have right. other things to do. I've been away for a week. I know, I know. I wasn't, I wasn't I got, I've been doing things too. All right, let's go. Kitties want lovings. All right. <laughs> okay, one more burger. Well, anyways, I got, we're at Burger Pie, Burger Week. I made that concoction, it's delicious. I don't remember what theirs is called or even what's on it, but look at this, it looks so good. There's some jalapenos on there, some kind of relish. I am ready. I'm so ready. Also, those puppies. All right, eating time. So, um, I've never, I never, uh, restringing a Floyd Rose Tremolo, way more complicated than anything else, because you actually have nuts up here. <laughs> Um, and I've already broken the E-string because I was unfamiliar with the Floyd Rose system, so it broke up here and I was trying to get a tune. We got special tuners down here. This requires Allen wrenches and stuff I had to get. You actually have to clip parts off the string. It's a complicated system, but it helps keep the tune with the whammy bar because most guitars, they don't have this locking strings down, so it keeps the tension off the tuning peg. So as you're whipping around here, it doesn't detune up here and it doesn't put stress on the tuning pegs. So I learned all that and I know I needed some more stuff. So I bought some more stuff, including a more trauma. It looks very yellow here, but it's kind of green, yellow. It looks very trauma. That's what I wanted. And I got some more tools. I got a bunch of strings in the way to fix all my guitars, but I got a utility kit with the right uh, Allen wrench in it. I got some proper hardcore string cutters and some polishing cloths because I already got some polish. And uh, I don't know if I told you this part. But uh, I grabbed the wrong cutter winder, but it's in a good way because I didn't consider the fact that I would also want a bass winder because the tuning pegs are so much wider. So there's one more little guitar update. And uh, I gotta restring this after doing an hour, hour and a half editing and uploading and blah, blah, blah. So let me get to that. Of course I'm gonna get to that after. Uh, <laughs> maybe one or two more Joe Bob quick stories? Probably not. And then, because I can't think of anything right now. And uh, wrapping up this vlog, I'm just turning on my computers and stuff. Whew, I have a little more editing to do than I thought I'd have tonight, but I don't have anything planned for tomorrow other than going to Frankfurt. Um, okay, going to, this is a random thing, going to Frankfurt for Burger Week and meeting Mary for dinner. More Burger Week this week. It probably won't be in the next vlog, but if seriously, if you're in Lexington, don't miss out on Lexington Burger Week. It's super fun. They do like restaurant week after this, which is all right. They've had pizza week, which is getting better. I, I don't know if we have a taco week. That'd be cool. I don't know if we have a legit hot dog week. I know Sidebar Grill is doing a hot dog week, but that's one place. Like it's better when it's a bunch of restaurants. You have a bunch of options in my opinion. Uh, anyways, um, Anything else, Joe Bob-wise, I need to tell you real quick because I keep forgetting more and more stories. Like, I told you it was next door to a pageant. I didn't think I had told you that, but I did tell you that. <sighs> My buddy Mitch is apparently going to get nice and intoxicated and watch Zeppo tonight. Good luck, Mitch. Oh, I got to shoot this movie review. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, se the Secret of Cuck Island? <laughs> That's coming out of the blue from um, my buddy Reeves, who works with The Last Drive-In. 
I was like, hey man, I know you're a trouble guy. You wanna watch this? And the star is like a fan of yours, uh, John. John, I know it's like, a, I wanna say like a Barrymore or something. Hold on, I, get, I suck at names and I'm learning. So I can actually find it really quickly. Uh, and yes, this is coming out in time. I'll tell you this movie, if you're in the, if you're in the Pennsylvania area, go to the, John Bergio. Um, yeah, Bergio. Bergio, Bergio, I'm sorry for the mispronunciation. Certainly correct me if you need to. Uh, there is a shot in that movie. I was like, oh, nope, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need that. Thank you. But I enjoyed that. But there's going to be a full review, so I'll talk about that elsewhere. But if you are going to Mahoning, Troma Dance is this weekend, which is a great place to have Troma Dance. And uh, it's in there on the 17th. So if you want to check out Reeves' movie, The Secret of Cuck Island, Jimmy Adamson is on there, uh, the drummer for The Big Feet, who I love and agrees that Wiggle is Screeching Weasel's best fucking album. I mean, my brain hurts and all that is great, but Wiggle is uh, chef's kiss perfection. And the Chicago pop punk scene was one of the best shit. One of the best, that, you know, that and like maybe the Berkeley scene, but Chicago probably put out more of my favorites, honestly. <laughs> like, like top tier favorites. Um, watched great trailers for the reactions this weekend. Everything was great. One recommended, one blind. Well, technically, then three other blind, but good choices. I'm excited about Regal Unlimited. There's so much to talk about. We'll talk about more. Next week, I will try and cook something. It might not be the pizza yet. Probably the last Thursday of this month, I'll do pizza. Next month, we'll get back to grilled cheese. And even though we do those every other week, we might take three weeks in August and just wrap it up you know, the two final four episodes in the final episode. But all said and done, it's late. I gotta go take finish taking out the trash. It's 1230, basically. Now on Thursday the 14th, technically still my Wednesday the 13th, uh, and Wednesday the 13th, by the way, uh, happy four-year Joe Bob. Which I think, I mean, that's like the start of season one. I don't think that was the marathon, but people are ce celebrating the marathon. Was the... I need to go look into that. I've had a whole bottle of wine now, so I'm a little confused, but I was like, was the season, was this, was the first marathon that crushed Shutter? was that season one then? Or we just finished season four, or did they do two seasons in a year? I know I've seen everything, I just don't remember right now. Plus, Mary and I did the two Miss Marvels, which was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, fuck it. I'm sure there's a thousand things I wish I could tell you, and maybe I'll tell you over time. I didn't really get to show you my haul. I got some cool posters and stuff signed. Um, from lots of people. Felissa Rose gave us a, you know, she congratulated us on the wedding, gave us a nice free signing since we've seen her so many times. Told her my uh, photo op plan to continue and she's down for that. Yeah. Fuck, I gotta go. All right, thank you everybody. Uh, oh no, I don't have my thing out here for setting the phone down. Comment away, what do you think? Did you go to the Jamboree? If you went to the Jamboree, let me know your YouTube name for sure. And hopefully we met. And if we didn't, let's meet next year. Um, and uh, maybe more cool thing. I, I have ideas for things I want to try and make get happening for next year, if we can. If not, I don't care. I'll go as a fucking partier like I always do. Uh, but also, great times. And now you, I know a lot of you are wondering about the Jamboree. Now you've got a sense. And maybe one day I will put out that four hour, let me tell you everything that happened at the first year. But there's still some secrets that haven't come, like secrets that are meant to come out, but haven't come out yet. So I'm kind of hesitant to put that out until those things happen. <laughs> Um, which I know are being worked on. I'm not trying to pressure anybody. That wasn't the intent of that statement. I just, as a fanboy, I'm like, oh, I need that special. I want to see it. I want to relive it. But all right, comment below, let me know. Click the thumbs up button. Give me the good old thumb of encouragement as I do love to be encouraged. And this is where it gets tricky because maybe, 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 I don't know. I might, I might have a temporary solution. Sorry. We will get through this. We will get through this together. That might have worked. Check out my music anywhere you listen to music. Look up Eric Butts, Spotify, iTunes, whatever, Pop Punk. You've heard me talk about it. If you like the music in this vlog, they are way cooler than I am and probably in a lot of ways better. But if you like what you heard, there's a good chance you might be one of the people that dig what I do. So, and, uh, whew. yeah. So look that up anywhere you listen to music. Eric Butts, check out a couple songs. More stuff coming. I'm really excited because I have some darker stuff I've been working on for either a side, some form of a side project. I have a couple of side project ideas I really want to work on. Um, and with that new badass guitar, I've already written some dope as fuck and it just keeps getting cooler as I work on it. But um, check all that out. Go to ericbutts.com, my out-of-date website that I'll eventually fix and look for, you know, some of my filmmaking stuff and other music because film stuff's coming too. I got a lot of ideas, not 100% cemented, but I do have a lot of ideas and and I am in I 
nothing is going to stop me from making something at some point next year. Ideally early in the year, we'll see. But one way or another, I'm coming out with some kind of short film, even if it has to be down as low as 90 seconds. Or maybe three minutes, or maybe five, or maybe 10, or, or whatever, within those ranges. Or maybe more, who fucking knows? We'll see, but I'm going to do something. And uh, let's check all that out. Check out the links in the description, more content, more ways to support the channel, all that and more. And uh, click the see more button, see more butts. And I'm gonna get out of here. If you know what I mean, and I think you do. Excuse me, Benny, I don't wanna step on Benny. I wish I had the chili bandit here. And uh, Joe Bob and uh, Darcy and I will uh, see y'all later.